شيخ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين آه آه أي بابا بابا إمام الأئمة صاحب المدرسة ما شاء الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين um, we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for preserving our lives till today and for making us present in this meeting we beseech blessings on our noble prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household his companions and to those that follow his path to the day of accountability I mean Before I proceed, I want to be sure that we can hear me. No, we can hear you. Oh, okay. No, there's a problem here. <clears throat> to start with, um, we need a recitation from the glorious Quran. Sheikh, will you do that for us? Sheikh, please go ahead. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي لم تحرم ما أحل الله لك تبتغي مرضات أزواجك والله غفور رحيم قد فرض الله لكم تحلة أيمانكم والله مولاكم وهو العليم الحكيم وإذ أسر النبي إلى بعض أزواجه حديثا فلما نبأت به وأظهره الله عليه عرف بعضه عرف بعضه وأعرض عن بعض شيخ إذا أنا problem yeah there was a problem Uh, sorry. عرف بعضه وأعرض عن بعض فلما نبأها به قالت من أنبأك هذا قال نبأني العليم الخبير إن تتوبا إلى الله فقد صغت قلوبكما وإن تظاهر عليه فإن الله هو مولاه وجبريل وصالح المؤمنين والملائكة بعد ذلك ظهير عسى ربه إن طلقكن أن يبدله أزواجا أن يبدله أزواجا خيرا من كن مسلمات منات قانتات تائبات عابدات 
تائبات عابدات سائحات تيبات وأبكارا حمدان نعم سرق الله العظيم وبلغ رسولنا الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهد جزاكم الله خير شيخ فاد ريسيتيشن نعم um today we are supposed to begin with another part of the life of our Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in Medina and the path we want to talk about is the prelude you know we want to talk about what led to but how did Badr come about what were the things that were happening before Badr now Prophet is in, in Medina now what are the things he can do what are the things he was doing what were the things he was not doing how was he able to interact with other people of different beliefs different tribe different nations how was he able to relate with them that's what we are supposed to be taking today however to make the zero class a very effective one i want to do a quick question and answer the last time we did revision i was questioning one set of people and that was for um Muhammad and Aisha were the only two people I was questioning. But since I have done a recap and we were present, I would ask questions and inshallah, I would be awaiting responses from you. And I would love to see much more hands raised virtually so that I can call names, inshallah. Again, before we go into that, I want to confirm something. So me and Sheikh Umar Abdul Salam, Allah Dimiji, Al Hajj, Ali Murabani, we were talking, and then he wanted to know if this time is still conducive for everybody. He wanted to be sure. If we have uh, other thoughts, please let us share, and then we would love to take it into consideration. Why we came into these conclusions is majorly because of the turnout of students. And then we would love to hear from everybody, from Muhammad to Murtada to Salim to Aisha. We'd love to hear from you. What you think about the times we have class? Hikma, Rabi, Ahmed, inshallah. So let me start with Aisha and Muhammad. Is the time conducive for you? Or you think we should change it to another day, another time, something? Let's hear from you. So that it's not uh, the madrasa making it very inconvenient for you. So please, let's hear from you, Aisha and Muhammad. Aisha and Muhammad? Yes. I guess the yes, did you hear what I said? No. No. Someone is saying yes, someone is saying no. No, I was saying no. Oh, okay. So let me repeat what I said. I said that inshallah we are supposed to move to the um prelude of how Badr, the Battle of Badr occurred. And then I mentioned that again, I'll be in a question and answer quickly before we proceed, because the last class classes I was asking only you and Muhammad, Aisha and Muhammad. It was only both of you I was asking questions. So I would love to ask other people and love to hear their responses. And the third one which I mentioned was that um, the time we are having the classes, is it conducive or you think we can make a change? Because of the turnout of students, it's not too encouraging. So those are the things I mentioned. So the major thing I want you to respond to now is the time. Is it conducive for you? Do you think we should change it? If we should change it, what time should we turn it to? We would love to hear from you. Um, 
To me, the time is okay. Okay, the time is okay for you. It's okay, this opinion. I guess this is Aisha. Hmm? I guess you are the one that said the time is okay. Yes. Okay, what well, of Muhammad? No, I don't like the time. It's not, it's not okay for you. No, it's not. The time is okay. Huh? Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad, I can't hear you. I'm not okay with this. You're not okay with the time? No, I'm not. So what time do you think we should... Um, what time do you think we should fix? I don't know. You don't know what time we should fix? Okay, so... Um, Aisha, if we change the time, if we change the time, let's say we change it to afternoon, would you still attend? Mm -hmm. Nam? No. Why? Because afternoons are not conducive for you. What of mornings? No. You will still attend. So it's only night that's conducive for you. Yes. I can't hear you. Okay. Yes. But for Muhammad, morning, afternoon, night, none of it is conducive for you. Afternoon. So, okay, afternoon is fine for you, Muhammad. <laughs> MashaAllah. Okay, Hikma, how about you? Is the time conducive for you? And then what time do you think is best if you want to hold the class? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa Um so about the time. Um we just recently changed the time here. So but I wouldn't say the time is like the okay, the days are not the problem because currently I work nights and my work my shifts are not fixed. So regarding to the days, I can like I might not be available any day, but for time, morning and afternoon is more convenient, is more reliable because I know that whenever day I might be working, I'll be available by morning and afternoon. But nights, I'm just not sure sometimes. There might be some Saturdays that I'll work nights. So it's just the time. So morning and afternoon is just better. However, okay. if night is still, I'm still going to try to make it sometimes. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was that was the words of someone who, who is very sure of what she wants. <laughs> or like Muhammad, who does not know? Whether he wants morning, afternoon, or night. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Now, so Murtaba and Salim, what are your thoughts? No morning. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Um, for me, I think the timing is all right. Okay. Mm, but so because it's weekend, sometimes I'm like really busy after classes. Okay. So sometimes it affects you to come in at night or you think night is because you are busy during weekends, so night is preferable or because you are busy during weekends, you don't think night is preferable. I want to understand what you were trying to say. Oh no, um our timing dif our time difference is different. So right now it's okay. night for you guys, for us it's afternoon. Oh. So I mean it's all right, but I'm uh, sometimes I can be busy. Oh, I get it. So <clears throat> would you say because of the time difference, do you, would you say morning is fine for you, even with the fact that you're busy? Can just make like one hour from your time in the morning. Is it possible? Um, 
if we if we were to if you were to ah. change to the morning, I mean to your afternoon, what time would you put it? Uh, probably two p.m. kind of time. PM. Uh, two p.m. That's fourteen seven. I think I th maybe that would be all right for for us. Oh, okay. Are you speaking so for you and is yeah, this Salim or Murtado? It's Murtado. Okay, so we are speaking for you and Salim. Yes, because it's two p.m. Uh, afternoon. Your time will be at seven a.m. So we'll be awake. Oh, okay. that time. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. What of um Sheikh? I don't know whether it's Sheikh or Sheikha. Rabi Ahmed. What are your thoughts? Salam alaikum. Uh, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Naam. Did so you get the question? Is, yes, but this is my first time attending the class, so I don't Alhamdulillah, know. it's nice, it's nice having you first. Majorly. <laughs> we really appreciate the fact that you're even here. Yeah. Amongst those people that we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Saturdays are mostly there. I don't know. You're always occupied Saturday evenings. Either having guests or something. Maybe, maybe oh. in the mornings will be better. But okay. I don't know what everybody's timing is like. Okay. Morning. Okay, inshallah. We will look uh, into it. From what I've gathered now, I can see that aside from Muhammad, I think Muhammad, no, sorry, aside from Aisha, I think every other person is tilting towards other timings. But for Aisha, night is very fine for her. So, inshallah, the, the mudir is here, Omar. So, we would um, still speak and conclude again with the polls we put in the group. With the polls we put in the group, um, inshallah. Okay, the sheikh dropped the message. With the polls we put in the group on WhatsApp, inshallah, we will still be expecting more responses from people. However, whichever time it falls into, if it doesn't pay you, Inshallah, we will be hoping that our recording gets better and then you can watch it on record. But however, the live classes are much more interactive. So Haja Rabi Ahmad said, you know, Saturdays evening, guests, they want to cook for a whole crowd, you know, family, friends. So mornings are better for her, according to her. So, but again, she's considerate of the responses of others. However, again, we are also happy to have her in our midst. So thank you very much. Naam. Omar, I want you to acknowledge that you've... Yes. I want you to acknowledge that um, you've hurt. So that we can put this thing into consideration, inshallah. So my people, um, today is more question and answer. And then I'll just give you a preview of the prelude. Assalamu alaikum. Now, I want someone, a volunteer, a question. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Ahmed Salakatu. You're breaking, you're breaking, we didn't hear you. Oh, what was the last thing you heard? We are going to be asking a question and it ended. Oh, subhanAllah. So I said I was going to be asking the question, and the question is, what was the first 
khutbah of Jumu'ah that the Prophet made. The, the, one thing you need to understand, which I've mentioned in the Sirah series, is that it's funny how the Sahabas observed Jumu'ah before the Prophet. So Prophet was amongst the last elderly people to leave Mecca. However, some most of the Sahabas already migrated to Medina and the command of Salat al Jumu'ah was sent already. So they do observe Jumu'ah already. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrating to Medina, he didn't enter Medina straight. So he stopped at Quba. And on Friday, he decided to move from Quba to the central Medina, which was where his masjid was built. Now, on their way, the time for Jumu'ah entered. So they were going to pray Jumu'ah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did a khutbah. Khutbah was very short. And then, you know, with the wordings, it doesn't last more than five to ten minutes. And it is said by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it's from the wisdom of a man that he keeps the lecture short and the solar long. And it's funny that it's the opposite we do now on Jumu'ah, that the, solar, the, the khutbah is longer and the solar is shorter. Now we understand because, you know, these days, Jumu'ah is the day where we see most of our Muslim brothers. Jumu'ah is the day where some people only pray. Some people they don't pray during the week, it's only Jumu'ah day. So all these things occur, and then the, the, the Imams feel like this is the best chance to actually speak to the crowd. So it's possible that that's why there's extension in the talks. But back to the question, make question. Just give us a brief and summary of what the first khutbah of the Prophet was like for Jumu'ah. Anyone, you can raise your virtual hand and I pick you, or you unmute yourself and talk. Hikma, would you like to tell me about it? No, I'm not able to. <laughs> what of Murtada and Salim? Would you try? I think you guys were in that class. I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. Aisha and Muhammad, how about you? Um, no. You can't tell me about it. I counted on you guys. Um, no, like, okay, yes, others are not going to tell me. Okay, the... yes, you can. Please go ahead. Talks about the people being generous. Fair the hell if and fair the hell even if it is a seed of idiots. He told, he told them, them to, to love Allah, Allah and not get tired of Allah's words. Your voice is echoing or something. He told them what? To love Allah and not to get tired of Allah's words. Hmm. Okay. Was that all? So, more reasons why we need um, question and answers like this. You guys, you've done well. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu people. You can mute yourself now. But here's the thing. The khutbah was very short. And then the khutbah, you know, was containing what we, we call, um, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's the method of Islam. You see in places where Allah would say, I'lamu anna Allah shadeedun al-iqab wa anna hu ghafoor rahim He will tell you that Know that Allah is very severe in his punishment 
and also is the forgiving the merciful. So Allah, you know, will talk about Jannah and then he talks about Jahannam. Allah will talk about the Muslims and the Kuffars. Allah will talk about this and he tells you the opposite. That's how Islam works. Islam will tell you when you observe Salah, you get this reward and if you refuse, this is your punishment. Islam doesn't sugarcoat. You know, some people will sugarcoat. They will say, oh, come now. Just believe in Allah and you are fine. It's not like that. Believe in Allah, follow his actions. Yes, that's Islam. So, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we mentioned that the, the khutbah was containing something like threats and rewards. You know, first, he reminded them of Allah. Then, he reminded them to be generous. Why is he reminding them to be generous? We mentioned that because this is the beginning of the capital of Islam. The Muslims just have a place of their own. They are developing a community of their own, a well-structured community. Before you can have a well-structured community, there have to be some funding and all that going in and out. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was urging them to be generous. Also now, more like a threat, but it's not a threat. He's telling them that they should remember that they would be asked on the things that they spend on. So Allah would ask you for the things you spent money on. However, not even only that, so many things where you'll be asked, but that's also a major. Allah says in Surah Al-Takathur, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ So you would be asked on the day of Qiyamah, on every time that you enjoy. You know you enjoy now, that is why you eat turkey, you eat beans, you know, all sorts of things that you use for enjoyment. Allah would ask you for every time that you enjoy. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi reminded them that they should remember that Allah would ask them on the things they spent on. So would you rather be happy that was useless? Or you'll be happy to tell Allah, Oh Allah, I spent in the building of the masjid for your sake. I spent in making the life of my Muslim brother easy. I spent in resuscitating a life. I spent in donation of the people in Gaza to help them as human relief. Which one would you be happy to say? Other than, oh, I, I had to buy PS4, yeah Allah. That was what I spent my money on. Buying PS4 is not bad, but which one is much preferable? Which one would you love to say in the sight of Allah? So Prophet ﷺ reminded them, they should remember that there would be a day where Allah would ask them on the things they spend their money on. And then he reminded them of the certainty of death. You listening to me, me speaking, those that will still watch the video later, those that are hearing in your surroundings presently something is very sure that one day I will die and one day whoever is listening to me is going to die there is no doubt the angels will die the genes will die everything that has nerves will die everything that is living will die that is very sure it's very clear the genes they will die so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded them the certainty of death. And what does death do does to humans? He reminds them to, be, to, to, to caution themselves. When you remember that there will be a day where you would answer to Allah, you remember there is a day where you can't help except the good things you've done when you are on earth. You remember that these things would occur. It strengthens and shapes your mind to be much more better. I know of people Two, three people that I know. Before the so before the incident of death occurred to them, they used to live life anyhow. And then when they knew death is very close, they became very religious. You can, if you have your Google, you have YouTube. Go and check on YouTube. Check the story of Ali Banat. Ali Banat. Or Bandits, I don't know how it's pronounced. 
He's a guy from Sydney in his 30s. He had money, lavish lifestyle. He lived the way he liked. And then he had cancer. And the doctor told him, you won't live for long. Ali knew. And what did he do? He started investing in the Akhil. He had few days, few months to live. He was rich. He tried as much as possible to give out all that he had. He tried. But he was so rich that he couldn't fulfill it till he died. But Ali maximized in, in, in making sure that his Akhir was much better. He visited the graves more often. He was there most times before he died finally. Look at the story of Sheikh Uthman. There's a Sheikh popularly known on YouTube also. Sheikh Uthman. He was formerly a gangster. A gangster in the mafia, the Mexico mafia. The ones that they deal with drugs and the likes. He was amongst the gangs. He was amongst the higher chamber. The ones that make the decisions. However, one of the gang members who was his friend died. And then they had not buried the friend he saw the younger brothers fighting to the cars and the guns and the clothes of the gang member himself. So the gang member died and then the family were fighting over the possessions of the gang member. They were not even concerned about the, the member himself. And then at that point, he realized that this could have been me and then Allah saved me. How would I not commit my life to Allah? So many stories like that. People that their death is what calls them to actualization. So Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reminded them in the khutbah of the certainty of death. And following the advice of being generous, he reminded them. So this is where one of the famous hadith was also extracted, where he made the statement of Fear the hell fire, even if it's if it's just with uh you know the seed of, of a date. People say even if it's half of date, it's not half of date. Shirk means the most useless thing in a date, whether it's the death in it, whether it's the fluffy thing that is always inside, anything as small as it is, give it a saraka. And you will see how Allah will distance you away from hell. So, this was what the major... So, you know, the khutbah is always divided into two parts. So, this was what the first part was talking about majorly. I am saying it carefully and slowly. So that next time when questions like this come up, inshallah, we don't miss out. We don't miss out. The second part, he started with the khutbah to hajj and I hope that everybody understands what Qutbat al hajjah is. Aside from Aisha and Muhammad, I want someone to tell me what Qutbat al hajjah is, please. If I proceed. Anyone? Hikmatun baligha. Would you tell me about it? Um, I just know that it is what... The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would normally say before he starts, oh, before he sorry, gives sorry. a speech. And it was what he said to Damar. You... Sorry? Yeah, not Damar. Sorry, Damar. That made him revert sure. to Islam. And right, it was also... But I have a question. I don't know what exactly it Good. translates to. Okay. The khutbah al Haja? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. What of Murtada and Salim? Can you tell us what khutbah al Haja is itself? Is Murtada and Salim still there? Um, I don't really. It like it's fine. Like come it comes in prayers. Come first in prayers. Okay, so Anyhow. this is what this is what khutbat al haja is. So this is like um, Hikma mm. said. That's how Prophet Muhammad started his speeches, 
and is known is his authentic sunnah of the Prophet He starts by saying Inna alhamdulillah. Exactly. All praises is due to Allah. Verily, all praises is due to Allah. Nahmadu. We praise Him. Aside from the fact that the praises are due to Him, now we praise Him because we know all praises are due to Him. Wanastainu. And then we seek our help from Allah Himself. Look, look at how this starts. All praises is due to Allah. Allah is the owner of all praises. We know that. So what do we do? We praise him. And after we praise him, because we know again that aside from praises, he has other things in his abilities. So what do we do? We seek help from him. And we seek forgiveness from him. And we seek refuge from Allah from the evils from our own self. We are seeking Allah. Allah protect us from our own selves because we ourselves we do evils, we commit evils. So we're asking Allah, Allah save us, protect us from the evils of ourselves. And the bad effect of our actions whoever Allah guides aright there is no one that can make him go astray pay attention if Allah guides you no one can make you go astray and whoever Allah guides astray no one can guide him. And this is this statement is even somehow like a summary of Surah Al Fatiha. Because in Fatiha, we praise Allah, we seek help for Him. We also ask Him that we don't want to be amongst those who are astray. Now, it continues by saying, Wa ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. And I bear witness that there is no deity. There is nothing worthy of worship. You can't worship anything. Like, there is no, if you think about it, is this thing enough for me to worship it? No. Except who? Allah. Allah is the only one that has enough reasons, clear proofs for us to worship Him. Wahdahu la sharika la. You worship Allah, only Him, no partners. No problem, sir. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُ And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. And it continues like that and it stopped at Amma Ba'd. So after the Amma Ba'd is where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now addresses whatever he needs to address. So this was the khutbah al hajjah So we are talking about the khutbah where Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started khutbah. Now he, he stopped, then he stood up and started with the khutbah al hajjah Contrary to the way he does his other lectures, we are told that he started the lecture with khutbah al hajjah But for this one in the record, it says the khutbah al hajjah did not come at the beginning. Instead, it, it came at the second part of the lecture. So, and then, you know, he told them, now, in the second one, he was emphasizing the love of Allah. He says, Love Allah with, this, with the spirit of Allah that is, that is in us. You know, he tells us to love Allah with our whole heart. The Allah, the successful one, is the one who Allah has beautified his heart and Allah has caused him to enter Islam. That's the best gift Allah can give to us. Making us enter Islam, making us die in Islam. And then he said, love what Allah loves. Whatever the, the things Allah loves are the things we should love. And then love Allah with our entire heart. He says, love Allah with your entire heart. And never get tired 
of never get tired never get tired of Allah's names and remembrance sorry never get tired of Allah's words and remembrance basically the Quran the Quran and Salah never get tired of them this was the first thing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was telling them and that Allah chooses Allah guides wherever he he wills and wherever he does like Allah guides wherever he wants and wherever you know he he misleads wherever he he likes so that's left to Allah and then he and he emphasized that they should be sincere to Allah and that um they should remember that Allah hates that his promises are broken that you should not break a promise that you've made to Allah basically very quick and short what the khutbah was about and it was a very profound khutbah for a beginning era for the muslims in medina so i hope that another day when i come to the class and i ask us questions like this i hope i can see two three four people ready to speak about it these are one of the sessions that was missed by most people and as much as possible I want to cover them so that when we are moving to the prelude of what caused the Battle of Badr by next week, we are cleared. And that's where the story of Islam gets much interesting. And then in this meeting today, I have Hikmah, I have Muhammad, I have Aisha, I have um, Hajia, Rabi, Ahmad, I have, um, I have, um, Murtada and Salim, more like seven people. I have seven people in the meetings. So inshallah, I'll be expecting these same seven and more people by next week. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spare our lives to them and beyond. And that he makes the session, the lesson, a hujah for us and not against us. Inshallah, by next week, you get much more interesting content from us. And then I don't know if we have questions contributions that we want to make before we end today's session and by next week we would um, proceed with the story proper and i would urge us to please make a promise that we won't miss the next section so that this you know it encourages even the teacher to do more when he is coming to class so if you have any questions and contributions please let us state them and then if not, we would um, end the session and adjourn the class till next week. So any questions, contributions, inshallah, we'll love to hear them. Anyone? No one. So here is what we're going to do. Since no one is trying to talk, Aisha and Muhammad say something. I'll call you guys one by one. That's what I'll be doing now. What do you have to say about the class? The class was interesting. Thank you very much. What else? That's all. That's all. Is this Muhammad or Aisha? Muhammad. You guys sound so similar. I find it. I find it. I find it interesting trying to figure out who is talking. Okay, Aisha, what about you? Um, I know that um the first thing the Prophet وسلم, said in the good word for Aja was that he reminded the people of Allah and then he talked uh, he told them that they should be generous. And he told them to love Allah and not get tired of Allah's words and remembrance. And what's, what's Allah's words and remembrance? Like his names and the Quran. What is, what is the word of Allah? The Quran. Why is Muhammad whispering? Muhammad, you are cheating. 
I was the remembrance of Allah. Um, his name? Majorly Salah. So. So Salah is like the major dhikr of Allah. Other things also fall in, but the Quran and Salah is the words and, and the remembrance of Allah. Now, thank you very much. Hikmah. Hikmatun baligha. Now. Um, I think I think it was really insightful, and it's really good how you take time to review what you've already like taken before, and I think it's really brilliant job, well done. Thank you so much. I really appreciate these classes. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you very much for the compliments. And from what I learned, I've finally been able to really get what the Kutubal Haja is. Like what it so, translates to and how it summarizes Surah Fatiha. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Now, Murtada and Salim. Uh, I think the class was very uh insightful, but I do have a question. Is this Salim or Murtada? Murtada. Okay. You have a question. Yeah. Uh, you was, there was a word you said, the matter. The matal as bill, yeah. So, the matal as the yeah, what does that mean? Okay, so thank you very much for asking. The matal as the is a name of a man, it's not like oh. a thing, it's oh, a I name don't... of a man. And this man, you know, we talked about khutbat al haja, we talked about yeah. the in alhamdulillah, nahmadu wa nasta'inu. So, the mat was a man who was told when he entered Mecca then that he shouldn't listen to the prophet. The prophet is the magician. When the prophet talks, you believe in him. These and that and that and that. So one day the man thought to himself, let me listen to this man for once because before then he used to put cotton wool in his ears, trying not to listen to what Muhammad is saying. So he said, let me even listen to what this man is saying, at least for today. He be saying rubbish, then I will keep on putting putting wools in my ear. Let's see how effective his words can be on me. What can he even say? I mean, medicine, because the math was more like a doctor then. So the doctors, you know, they see you, they know what's wrong with you. They get um, leaves and whatever kind of herbs for you to use. So that was what the math was like then. So, you know, he was like, if this man is as mad as they, as they call him, if he's as sick as they call him, then let me treat him. Let me listen to what he has to say. So he approached the prophet and he said, Mr. Man, tell me the things that they say you used to say. I want to even hear, I want to experience it myself. And before the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam could say anything, he started with the khutbah al hajj In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru. To the end, and then when he got to the end, the man said, please repeat those words again. And the prophet repeated it several times and he said, Wallahi, I've heard words from different people I've heard words from the genes, from humans. I've heard words from the best of poets. But I've never had anything as accurate, as genuine as these things that you've just mentioned. And as a result, the Mat al-Asdi converted to Islam on the spot. Okay. So that's what the Mat al-Asdi means. Okay, and not you. only him. There were other people that also converted. But this is one of the stories we, we captured. Of those people that just convert just by hearing words of Muhammad Sallallahu So I hope I've clarified that. Yes, you have. Thank, and thank you. you. Thank you for asking because you would have helped. You've helped so many people in also understanding. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. What of Salim? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Yeah, I really enjoyed the class and hearing you explain more about uh, Kutba. My Those pleasure. You more insight into the okay and we hope that you get to attend more so that you can gain more insight because the thing about these things we know them as you are murtada as you are hikmah as you are all of you one way or the other you've attended Jumu'a prayer on friday i don't know how hard it is to observe salah over there or whatever but somehow you've attended Jumu'a. And if you've not attended Jumu'ah, at least you've attended it. 
Yes. So if you attend the Eid, you would know that before the Imam starts with the main lecture, he starts with these words, Inna alhamdulillah, Nahmad, because this is what the Prophet starts with, it's Sunnah. But then we just listen, we just hear, it's like, oh, this is what this man is just saying, you know. But then when we get to understand it, it's much more better. So you flow with the Imam more. Your mind is much connected to the Imam in this scenario because you are paying attention. You know what he's saying. You know why he's saying it. You know the importance. You know how many people have benefited from just these words. So, yes, thank you very much for um, calling our attention to that. Now, yeah, Haji Arabi Ahmad. Any comments from you? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa Um, This is, like I said, this is my first time, but I will you, will you be coming really next week? enjoy it. Inshallah, I will. Inshallah. I will be expecting you. I will specially call out your name. I'm listening, Ma. Like you said, I we all was yes. So it's 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 a uh, it's amazing. I got to learn something today, and I hope next week to be as interesting. Inshallah. Inshallah, and then we'll be expecting that uh, we see more of you, and for others also, we're starting to see more of you. By next week, we've we've said so many stories. However, we've talked about Prophet Muhammad entering Medina, getting into Medina. The things he puts in place. So it's it very significant that the prophet got to Medina. He wasn't thinking of building a house for himself or whatever. He said he thought of building a masjid. We talked about the scenarios that happened and all these we've explained it. And then inshallah, another major event that happened in Medina after the prophet got to Mecca and um, to Medina was Badr. So by next week we'll be talking about what led to Badr, the things that happened, and and then, inshallah, we hope to continue with this progressively. We know about the Prophet, we love the Prophet, but however, when we get to know him more, we get to understand the message he brought, and we get to know Allah himself more, and we get to love Allah and his messenger. And this way, it is easy for us to obey their commands. Because Allah said in the Hadith of Qudsi, it's not in the Quran, this is Hadith of Qudsi. Hadith of Qudsi is the Hadith that is said by the Prophet from Allah. So Allah says, qabla an Know me first before you worship me. And for the person that doesn't know me, how would he worship me? Know Allah first before you worship him. And then if you don't know Allah, how do you want to worship him? So please, this is a duty for you and me to know Allah more. And these are avenues for us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us, spare our lives, um, forgive our dead ones, cure our sick ones, um, grant aid to the oppressed, and then admit all of us, inshallah, in Jannah to Firdaus. Also make us companions of Muhammad sallallahu in Al Jannah. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Again on the timing inshallah we we'll definitely get back to everybody but still expect that this same time is going to be used by next week and then inshallah I'll see you same time next week السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته